spied a cowpuncher riding along. His hat was thrown back, his spurs was a jingle. As he rode out, he was singing this song. Yippee tie I o get a long little doggy, it's your misfortune, none of my own. Yippee tie I o get a long little doggy, and oh, a woman will be your new home. From the 1870s to 1908, John Sparks and Jasper Harrell built a cattle empire in northeastern Nevada and southern Idaho. From Wells, Nevada to Pilot Peak on the Utah border, north to Twin Falls, Idaho, they ran tens of thousands of cattle over millions of acres. The old cattle barons didn't do it alone. This is a story about Henry Harris, one of the cowboys that stayed on to help get the work done. I'm Robin Boyce. The vineyard ranch, my home, was a small portion of the old Sparks and Harrell empire. Every now and then we have an outstanding personality that must be eulogized. Sometimes they get their flowers while they live, the majority of them after they are dead. Such a person has been brought to your attention this week in the death of an early beloved pioneer, Henry Harris. Mrs. Pauline Yarbrough. Twin Falls Evening Times, April 6, 1937. Henry Harris, the son of a slave, was born in Georgetown, Texas. In 1885, at the age of 17, he left home and traveled with John Sparks to the high desert of northeastern Nevada. Henry came to serve as a houseboy for the Sparks family, but soon found horses, cattle, and the open range his destiny. It was said, if it had hair, Henry could ride it. Jay Strode, one of the last old-time cowboys, tells a story he heard as a young man about Dick Clark and Henry Harris in the early years working for Sparks and Tenon. They had came from Texas with the Sparks and Harold when they trailed cattle here from Texas. And uh, him and Harry, him and Henry was with those and he said for several years when they first got here they didn't they they didn't have the best horses in the world and he said Henry and I would, would uh, these cowboys saddle their horses up in the morning and Henry and I would top them off and get the buck out of them and then turn that one over to one cowboy and get on the next one he said that's all we did and when we got them up mounted and on their way away from the wagon while we were laid in the shade to us today Princes of sagebrush and lupin-scented air ride kaleidoscope circle in vulnerable spirits, sweet promised land. The killing white winter of 1889-90 hit the country with a vengeance. Great Basin wild rye, white sage or winter fat, and Indian rice grass were covered with snow. Temperatures fell to 40 and 50 degrees below zero. Thousands of cattle bunched together in the bottoms looking for food. Horses stood head to tail, chewing each other's manes and tails. Out of a reported 38,000 head of cattle, Sparks and Tenon branded 68 head that spring. The high desert must have been a harsh and cruel reality for Henry and his crew as they searched for survivors. Ownership of the San Jacinto Vineyard and H.D. or Wine Cup ranches changed as fortunes were gained and lost on Texas cattle and free grass. Henry stayed on. He was foreman of a crew of black cowboys and ran the Wine Cup wagon for years. The wagon was at Oakley, Idaho, or in that close vicinity, and he and the cowboys went to the saloon that night or drinking place, wherever it was, in, in Oakley. They was all lined up at the bar, and, and uh, another outfit of cowboys come in, and one of these new cowboys said, I smell a damn nigger. And Henry said, I smell a Mormon. And one of the Henry's cowboys said, get him, Henry, and he said, Henry got him. <laughs> but ordinarily, they said Henry had never 
would never step forward until he was invited. No matter where they went, if they went into a place where Henry had to stand back until somebody said, come on, Henry, and invite him forward. Henry had earned the respect of his employers, Sparks, Tenon, and the Heralds, and pretty much anyone who knew him. Around 1908, the land holdings were sold to the Utah Construction Company. From topping off a bronc in his long johns to having a top-notch string, Henry's ability with horses was legendary. Anyone who has known an old-timer knows that it is usually the story of a favorite horse that will make the old fellow's eyes well with tears. Henry was a, a suburb horseman. He always rode the best horses in the cavalry, no matter, no matter what. Henry, <coughs> Henry always rode big horses. I said the biggest horses that they had. Horse weighed 12 or 1300 pounds, and in them days that was a pretty big horse. And uh, being owned by a construction company, they ran lots of horses in that country, probably a couple thousand head of horses at least, to replace their work, work stock on their dirt moving equipment. Well, I don't know what year this was, but they put the word out that. Every horse over 1,200 pounds was to be shipped to Utah for a construction outfit. Well, Henry's horses was all over 1,200 pounds. So they took all of his horses. The foreman at that time, Miss Henry was getting old and they, he wasn't the boss anymore. And the foreman tried to talk the superintendent out of sending them back there or whoever was responsible for it. but. Couldn't get the job done, so they sent all of Henry's horses to, to the construction outfit. And the foreman said, well, you can start another bunch of horses, Henry. He said, no, I'm too old, so. But he was at the O'Neill Ranch when he got, he took sick. He had, he had uh, got to the point where they, they kept him in a, in a camp west of San Jacinto on the mountain they called Cottonwood and there was a big pasture there, not a big one, probably four or five section. And Henry stayed up there in the summertime and kind of tended that country. And he was at the O'Neill when he took sick and they took him to town and he never come back. Henry Harris died April 3rd, 1937. He was buried in Twin Falls, Idaho, the site of Sparks and Tenon's Spring Rodeo Grounds. Out my kitchen window to the northwest of the vineyard lies Ellen D. Mountain, named after two prostitutes from Contact. Little Salmon Falls Creek lies to the west. China Mountain towers in the east, stingy with the winter's morning sun. South, I could just barely see the top of Henry, named for Henry Harris. Cold Springs, Dry Creek, Bull Camp, and Loomis make a wide sweeping curve. As ranchers, our numbers are few. Until recently, the sagebrush acted as anesthesia to most who traveled the long highway stretches through Nevada. The monotony served as a cloak of protection to a ranching culture that today faces extinction. Like Henry, at times we face hostility and prejudice because we ranch on the public lands. We often cope with top-down political decisions and regulations that seem cold-blooded, just like Henry when they took his horses. Like Henry, we find a reason to stay on.